Kentwood, Episode 6, Etruscan Twist, by Jacob Thompson. I'm Dan Sebago, and were I to attempt to pin down a golden age in the career of Professor Eldridge Kentwood, I would put it somewhere between the late 1980s and the turn of the century. The very first cloud on the horizon, although I did not recognize it as such at the time, was the resignation of Bertrand Wig as the head of university security. An expert on law enforcement he was not, but above all else he possessed the knowledge of when to defer to the expertise of Professor Kentwood. His successor, Doug Melligan, did not share this ability. This story is from the early days of Mr. Melligan. Professor Kentwood, Doug Melligan would like to talk to you. Is that the name of that drifter who is placed in command of campus security? I believe, Professor Kentwood, that Doug Melligan is no mere hobo. You may, in fact, need to come to his office. Ha! The security office lies in the bowels of the events center. Only a case of uncommon interest or mortal peril could coerce me to enter that den of sports, fast food, and undergraduates. He seemed very firm on the point of refusing to meet you at your house. I did not spend the vast fortune awarded to me by the Jamaican government on a three-story stone Victorian mansion just to run silly errands in the darkest corners of this institution. Eldridge Kentwood is an easy man to find, and from the looks of Melligan, he could use the exercise. A bit later, I relayed the message to Melligan. And in conclusion, Professor Kentwood told me to tell you that he believes that the exercise involved in walking to his office would, quote-unquote, do you some good. (sighs) I was afraid it would come down to that. Why don't you just give me his private phone number? The two of us really need to clear the air. Very few people have Professor Kentwood's number. Don't take it personally. He should see me because I am the law on this campus. And I do choose to take it personally. Uh, Mr. Wig had no problem with Professor Kentwood's methods. I also had a problem with Wig. Look, I'm trying to be reasonable. Mr. Melligan, is there a problem here? Not at all. This is just Dr. Uh, Sebago, who has decided to represent Dr. Kentwood. You'll have to learn how to deal with Dr. Kentwood if you stick around here. If that is Dr. Eldridge Kentwood, he is a famous in Italy. Are you talking about that time he solved the mystery of who kidnapped that soccer player? Are you from Italy? The sport is called football, and yes, I'm a study abroad. The first thing you need to know, Fran, is that if you talk to Sebago, you might as well be talking to Kentwood. And you don't want to talk to Kentwood unless you have to. I'd like to meet this Kentwood. You really don't. The last thing that I want to do is go to that creepy cobweb mansion that he built right next to the friggin' Bursar's office. Sebago, you can tell Dr. Kentwood that he is a humorless, grouchy clown who can expect no help from me when he gets himself in a pile of trouble. I knew that Kentwood wasn't going to like this. And, indeed... What? Why no sense of humor? My sense of humor is merely too subtle and cruel for most to detect. Mr. Melligan did indeed seem rather set in his position. On the other hand, there was an Italian girl who was working for him who seemed interested in coming here. Could you be so kind as to provide a physical description of this girl? She was rather striking, about five foot six inches tall. Uh, Dark hair, dark brown eyes, wore all white, and had a small dimple on her chin. What part of Italy was her accent redolent of? I can't say offhand. (sighs) Oh, Daniel, when will you cease to be hopeless? What little you could tell me will nonetheless prove useful. It appears that my feud with the World Language Association may be at last coming to a head. (coughs) Absolutely, my pet. You make a splendid point. And you will need to guard this office. Uh, I don't know the meaning of this. I did not expect you to. Just be aware that the next time Melligan demands my attention, he shall get it whether he wants it or not. Before long, Melligan called back, as he was wont to do, and Professor Kentwood surprised him by acquiescing to his request. At last we meet, Professor Kentwood. I have no idea why you insist on pestering me, and I've given you this opportunity to prove that you aren't merely wasting my time on a power trip. 
I just wanted to tell you in person that while I'm at the school, I'm not going to have uh, patience with Eldridge Kentwoodism. What is that, pray tell? It's the idea that somebody other than the police or the administration is going to be in charge of this place. It's you taking over this school by blackmailing everybody. I suppose that you enjoy inventing pseudo-academic jargon rather than trying to solve problems. Have you considered teaching at this school? Your puffery is being wasted while you break up beer bashes. Dr. Kentwood, I need to say something. Wait, Daniel. I'm hearing this man out. I'm not taking any of your crap. All right, Daniel. What is it that you have to tell me now? It just seems that after we left your mansion, Francesca Baroni was caught trying to break into your office. You know her, don't you? Of course. She works for me. I can't believe she'd do that. Well, perhaps Professor Kentwood has a ready explanation. Damn it, this is exactly what I just warned you not to do. Daniel will bring Miss Francesca to this office momentarily, but first I shall explain why she attempted to disturb my place. You are disturbed. I rather disagree. When I am disturbed, I perform actions such as this. Give me a bag of shredded paper. Were you a gentleman or a scholar of languages, you would be weeping and desperately trying to reassemble these torn scraps. Since I am obviously not a gentleman or a scholar, explain why I should care about this, you limp-dicked ass. I'll return Miss Baroni to this office in a few minutes. Splendid. That should be sufficient for me to provide an explanation. I guess you win. I've walked right into your trap, and you have no idea how much I want to kick your f***ing ass. Ahem, language. As you may have already guessed, I have long had a feud with the language magazines the world over since they first rejected my essay. Hurry up and finish your story. My essay covered in exacting detail how the Philadelphia accent is not only grating to the air, but a threat to the integrity of the English language as a whole. The elimination of that diabolical dialect and all who speak it would purify our culture. In spite of how much I never want to talk to you again, I'm going to stay at this school long enough to have a chance to punch you in the face. Do not interrupt, Professor Kentwood. Well said, loyal servant. That bag of paper represents revenge. I chose to retaliate against those journals by eliminating a precious language. Are you on drugs? Perish the thought. I, Mr. Melligan, am the only man alive who understands Etruscan, the ancient pre-Roman language of Italy. I have destroyed all of my records and cast this tongue into eternal darkness. When Dr. Eldridge Kentwood is snubbed, he takes his secrets to the grave. Daniel, bring in Miss Baroni so we may hear a sampling of her anguish. I have a bell to Italy. Now Fran is crying. I don't think you could have actually made a worse impression if you tried. I have made exactly the impression that I wished. I have indicated that it is unwise under any circumstances to cross me. From now on, I will perform my duties and you, yours. What do you think my duties are? Stop underage drinking, shoplifting, and other mindless misdemeanors of minors. Leave me to the murders. Locked room mysteries and lucrative third-party commissions. I can't wait until you get in trouble so that I can refuse to help you. In that case, I shall stay away from trouble. You will stay away from Italy if you know what is good for you. As both spaghetti and mobsters are abundant on these shores, I grieve not. Damn you to hell, we will you be raped eternally by the ghost of the Etruscans? Duly noted. Get out of here, you ass. I'd like to know who taught you to hate fun. Ah, you enjoy parties, Melligan? Just leave! Unfortunately, Professor Kentwood had made a lifelong enemy, and matters only grew worse when he tried to disprove the popular notion that he had no sense of humor. He threw, or arranged to have thrown, a party in front of the university security office. It was difficult for anyone to enter or leave the office, and nearly impossible to drive cars out of the parking lot. I'd come to the party to apologize to the affected parties when I met University President Roy Grackle. I wish I had been surprised by his presence. Doctor, 
Hey, what is your name? You teach here, right? I'm Dr. Sebago. Ah, Dr. Kentwood's servant. What are you doing at a party? I'm not sure if it wouldn't be a good idea to let people into the security office, just in case something happens on campus. Something is happening on campus, Professor Bringdown. It's called a party. Have you ever heard the saying, you only live once? Uh, everyone knows that phrase, Mr. President. Well, in the one life I'm living, I have to get this school competitive with all the other universities out there. I want us to be ranked number one. A football team would break the budget of the athletics department, so that's out. Lots of people use the US News and World Report rankings to say who's best, but that's freaking stupid. Because they don't take the tuition into account. Lots of other studies are based on the other slipshod metrics, so I'm going simple here. The Princeton Review only judges schools based on parties, and it gets its findings straight from students, and students are a hell of a lot more qualified to judge parties than how well people like us are doing our jobs. The more parties I set up, the more likely we are to become number one in the chart. Since I've come here, we've gone from 167th best party school to the top 10, and I'm not stopping until we hit the top. Uh, I don't get it. If you don't get it by now, you won't get it ever. I believe I'm going to get to work on a keg stand now, so goodbye, and loosen up. I left the party shortly afterwards, but that did not keep me from hearing a cry in the distance. And thus, the relationship between the two men was poisoned from the start. Things nevertheless kept working out for Professor Kentwood, until they didn't. Hear about those unfortunate events, eventually, somewhat later, in my adventures of Kentwood. <laughs> 